guys welcome to another video tutorial from tech crews this is park singh and let's get into it so this video tutorial is actually going to be the first of a sub series in the hacking tutorials because we're going to be covering up metasploit and metasploit is actually a very vast framework for exploitation so this is going to take some time and this is going to be very interesting because metasploit is actually what got me into penetration testing because i was developing some uh, malware for uh, <laughs> hacking my friend's android but uh, let's not talk about that and get into the real stuff so what do you guys want to do uh, to start metasploit is go over here and type in service post gray sql start what this does, it it starts a service called page PostgreSQL just for Metasploit to initiate the database and look into it. So the next thing you guys want to do is msfdb and type in init. What it will do is it will initialize a particular database. So if you guys have been fuzzing around with the Metasploit on your own, you guys might have noticed but when you actually search for a particular exploit to see whether it is present in the system or not, it takes a lot of time and if, uh, often there is a warning that uh, the database has not yet been initialized or something like that. So it will fix that. So hit enter and okay, <laughs> don't forget to type in T and I have already configured it. So you guys want to do is clear. So the next thing we guys want to do is type in MSF console. This will fire up our console for Metasploit and let's wait for it to load. This loading will not, <laughs> will actually be any quicker because <laughs> it's Metasploit. So let's just wait for it to load. You know, I just love these awkward silences. All right, we have Metasploit up and running. The best part about Metasploit is not that it's very vast. It's not that it can be used with anything. It's not that it can be used almost in every situation. It's that it has a very cool banner over here and I freaking love it. Often I just keep typing banner and <laughs> it keeps giving me some. So what you guys can see, I have already told you guys, these are the number of exploits, encoders, payloads, post auxiliary, post modules, auxiliary modules available. And uh, what we are interested in, I'm just going to clear this out. So we're going to take this step by step. So what you guys want to do is I'm going to open another tab for me and get system privileges to open another tab on your current terminal. Just con hold control shift and press G. So what do you guys want to do? Okay. When you are actually conducting a scan or a vulnerability report on a particular client or a company. So sometimes what they do is if there is actually techie geek, which is very rare, they are going to ask you the logs of Metasploit that you used to attack them. So you guys can type in echo spool root msf console dot log to root dot msf5 I suppose and msf console oh wait, did I spell that right console yeah uh, dot rc so what this will do is it will create a log file uh, I'm not gonna hit enter because usually the log files get really really large but if you're auditing a company it's a good idea to log everything that you do on Metasploit and it also acts as an insurance because sometimes uh, you won't believe how often this happens but uh, sometimes things get out of hand and people usually accuse you of things that you didn't do and one mistake I made over here is what do you guys want to do is put in a greater than sign okay so this will create a logs from to this directory with the name of msf console.rc so i'm just gonna clear this out and let's move back over here so what do you guys want to do when you open uh, any msf console window type in help type in help as much as you can as much as you want don't be ashamed you always need it Okay, so the next thing is search. What search does is it will search for a particular CVE number. So when you actually find a vulnerability, like I showed you in the Nasus tutorials, so you can go check them out. Link would be in the video description down below. And you often get a vulnerability. Let's just say you get 068. Okay, <laughs> zero. Okay, the stupid num log. I have to fix this. 067. Uh, 2008 or something like that so it will search for the particular CVE number and it will yield results so these are not the results uh, that you are actually looking for because I happen to have typed the CVE number wrong so this just showed me all the results that it got for exploits so let's just clear this out the next thing what you guys want to do is okay what the hell uh, 
So the next thing you guys want to do is let's just say you actually happen to have a particular exploit using. So I'm just gonna type in, okay, we're gonna use this exploit. And what this does is if you type in info and spell it right, it will show you how the exploit works. So you guys can see how this exploit works. It has a very brief introduction to it. And what you guys can do is go to these links and often there are links available, but sometimes there may not be. I have no idea because I haven't checked out every exploit. So you guys can see how the actual vulnerability works and it will help you further in your career because you just don't want to be a script kiddie. So let's just type in clear. And what you guys want to do is type in show and it will show you all the particular, see, what do we have here? So all the compatible encoders and knob generators. So what knob is, hmm, let me, okay, should I tell you guys right now or should I wait for, okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, knob says no operation. It is usually indicated by hex 090. If you guys don't know, let me show you guys. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I really hate this when this happens. I'm just gonna close this window. And what knobs, is I'm gonna show you how it is represented. This is how you represent knobs. It is actually used for buffer overflows and I'm really embarrassed that I had to close the f window. So the next thing you guys want to do is type in set. So let's use our expert again and show options. Show options will tell you, don't forget to type in S and show options will tell you all the options that are required to run the particular exploit. So if we set our host to 111.111.111.111, which is really non existing. So here you go. And if you type in show options again, you get that the particular option has been set. So let's just clear this out. These commands are actually very essential, and I'm getting a weird text. Okay. So what you guys want to do next is check command. Check command. <laughs> is will actually help out you help you out a lot because uh, exploits like heartbleed and heartbeat are actually very beneficial because they actually support check this particular exploit doesn't so when you check and when you type in check and it will actually output you whether the particular um, target is exploitable or not is vulnerable or not is the correct term uh, i am going to post a cheat sheet what do you guys call it in the video description down below, it will help you guys a lot. So take a look at this. And the next thing you guys want to do is obviously exploit command. So exploit also has a couple of parameters. The ones I usually use are dash J because sometimes what I do is I will usually form a document, a word document with the, okay. <laughs> I am forgetting the name. Okay, the macro keys. Oh my God, I am so out of memory right now. The macro key, macro enable document and I will just shove it down some company's email and <laughs> what people do is that they will forward the document to other their colleagues or their partners or sometimes even their bosses because I usually frame it that way that it appears to be a notice from their uh, CEO or CTO or something like that and mostly the people who are um, uh, not very informative on all this, this stuff. So they will actually forward it and people open it and it rains shells. So dash J what does is it will wait for all the connections to just come in and it will log them as sessions. So another command is sessions. I currently have no active sessions over here, at least on this machine. So it will show you all the sessions that have been created. So you guys can tap it in any session at any time at any reboot you guys want. Another uh, variable you can pass in exploit command is dash Z. What dash Z does is it will not create a, what do you say, a shell. Uh, it will not interact with the shell if you get one. So it will run as a background job and you can just tap into it at any time during your session. And let's clear this out. The one thing I want you guys to remember is that when you're jumping between exploits and you have the same target or the same set of targets, what you guys want to do is set GR host and the IP address of whatever your targets IP address is. What set G does it is it will declare a global variable. So our host is going to be the value you type after this is going to be the IP address of the machine that you're actually attacking. So this helped me out a lot whenever I'm targeting a lot of uh, different people. And uh, 
what else should I do uh, show you guys okay one thing that really is really really messes me up is that background command uh, when I was um, getting into what do you say penetration testing I used to get shells and I had to do a background job but I actually didn't know how to exit a particular shell so what I used to do was just uh, plain out exit and I used to lose the session every goddamn time and I didn't know that you have a freaking command built into it that you can run so that you won't lose the shell and you can do your background jobs so background command is very helpful but if it doesn't work what you guys can do is hold on control and press press Z and it apparently stopped my MSF console I should have known that but it will uh, take the session that you're currently in and it will post it as a background job see I told you I love the banners you gotta love the banners and let's just clear this out so that's it for today's video guys i know it's a very short video but trust me i had a very long day and this is all i could come up with because <laughs> trust me my mic is still giving me a lot of troubles but uh, tune in keep an eye out for all the other video tutorials that i'm gonna be uploading so i'll see you guys in the next video tutorial if you guys liked it hit that like button if you guys want to see more of us hit that subscribe button we upload every freaking day and i've already told you it's very exhausting but i do it for you guys so please show your support and i'll see you guys in the next video tutorial see ya